when you ask for a Chevy parts truck because you need a differential and then you end up getting the differential you're all set then you get two Chevy parts trucks it's just how it goes first got this 2000 Chevy Silverado <clears throat> Uh, a guy that I know blew his transmission 4L60 in his 2000 GMC and uh, he came across his truck and it had uh, 130,000 miles on it which is uh, very low for one of these especially a 2000 and uh, he said I need that transmission and I need the ABS pump for mine. Who cares about ABS? But I guess he does. And uh, he said, "You want to go in on the deal with me, in on the truck, and uh, split split the cost, which was it's basically scrap price." And he said, "You can have everything else." He said, "Do we just need to?" Uh, get the transmission out for me and uh, the ABS pump and then that's it so I end up with another front differential and millions of other parts including an LS 5.3 with the harness and everything 130k still fresh runs nice and smooth and uh, she's just sitting in there she's ready to come out just a couple bolts just uh, took my time I said we might as well bring her right in my garage and uh, he came over took the transmission right out gave him a hand and he was happy put it in his truck at his house and He's driving around, and uh, he said it shifts like new. So this truck was a old man's truck since new. The uh, Knights of Columbus, and um, what happened is, you know, just up here in Maine, they just get too too rusty underneath, and uh, all the lines needed every fuel line gas tank fell right out of it brake lines so it just gets to a point where they say well we've had enough the old shackles came up through the bed it's like they all do Lots of good parts. We got we got radiators. We got differentials. We got bumpers. I mean, look at this. You don't find a a bumper that nice off one of these trucks used anyway. Usually, you got to buy a new one if you need one. But that is a really nice bumper. That's a hundred bucks right there. We got transfer case and uh, lots of small parts that the blue truck needs. You know, just uh, stupid things like this console that works really nice, and the one in that truck's always been broken. Yeah, interior is really not too bad in this thing. A little rip in that seat, but usually they're a lot worse. So, oof, I've been so busy picking up stuff that I just throw all my copper, aluminum, wire, haven't had a chance to uh, process it, but I gotta do it soon. 
We got mint condition rust free fenders for sale. We got doors. Look at these doors. Not a speck of rust on the bottom of these doors. Perfect mirrors. What's that, you ask? Oh, that's a stainless. Uh, that's from McDonald's right there. Yep, I got a call, I got a call from McDonald's, and uh, they're uh, renovating the whole restaurant. So they had a few things they were getting rid of. Old snow finally melted. Suburban's ready. Ready to come out. Well, so that's the story on that truck. And uh, I'm almost done. I just wanted to uh, make sure I talked to a guy that I used to know that uh, does LS swaps and you know, he's like, uh, does all the wiring for a lot of people and when they swap, you know, fuel injection stuff into older vehicles. And I said, you know, before I rip this thing out, I want to know, you know, basically what I need out of this mess here. And he said, Chris, he said, uh, times have changed. And uh, now, he said, it's cheaper and easier to uh to just buy a, a standalone harness on Amazon or eBay and uh you just plug it right in whatever you're putting it into just uh keep the computer and you know a few a few wires you know like for the alternator down to the starter stuff like that he said but um you know he what he used to do is you would you would take your harness like this whole thing and you would send it to him and he would sit there and uh, go through it and get rid of all the wires that you don't need for your swap and make it as simple so that you can just um, plug it in and uh, hook power to it and go but he said uh, he said no I'm sort of out of business on that end of it because you can just turn around and buy they just make a harness for these now because the LS swaps got so popular so I picked up a uh, engine stand the other day for 20 bucks so I'm just gonna pull this out slap her on there and uh, you know down the road kind of dream thing possibly Swap it into uh, something, maybe, maybe the old '78 Suburban. I always kind of dreamed about having just a fuel injected LS in there. I thought it'd be kind of cool, but nowadays the old LS swap thing is like gay to a lot of people. I don't know, not to uh, be uh, politically incorrect by saying gay, but. You know what I mean? Uh, not really the the in thing to do anymore, but I'm way behind in times, and I always I kind of thought it would be cool, and uh, I still might still might get my dream one day, but can't really complain. Ended up with a lot of good parts, and uh, so then. Just after I make the deal on that, this truck here, this was actually sitting across town um, at another trailer park that I cruised through, and uh, I spotted it sitting there all winter, had moved, and I said, man, that's, that looks like a broken down truck that's a broken dream, if you know what I mean. So, um, sure enough, I get a message to my uh, my Facebook page uh, business page and uh, the kid says yeah you know do you buy vehicles without titles and I said what year is it and he said it's a 99 so I said yep I can buy that so 
what is it? He said it's 99 Chevy 1500 Silverado. I said, let me guess, it's sitting over there. And he said, yep, that's where it is. That's the truck. I said, well, I've seen it before. So, he kind of thought that it was uh, worth a little more than uh, than I did, obviously. But, um, he said it still had the cats on it. So, I uh, went over there to take a look at it. And, uh, the frame's actually not too rusty on this one, but it's got a crack right there. It's kind of weird. But, I mean, if you look at the rest of the frame, it's nothing like the other truck. It's really not too bad. But it did crack there. And uh, the story was a uh, lady was driving it. And it was sort of like uh, the maintenance, uh, you know, take the trash, you know, stuff like that to the dump um, for the park and see is a lot of propane tanks and stuff it's just kind of like uh, you know a beat up interior kind of work truck but she was using it and uh, <clears throat> she was at the bank drive through stepped on the brakes and lost all the brakes nothing at all so same old story all the lines rotted um, and then she took it to a shop and they found that crack in the frame and she said nope so anyway she gave it to this other kid that was like uh, an employee for her and he was gonna do something with it but you know how the story goes just a broken dream so he let it sit there, and uh, he said, you know, he said, it wasn't starting with the key, and we were jumping the solenoid on the starter, and we did have it running. He said it ran smooth, but he kind of told me I could hear it run, and then when I got there, he tells me that story, and uh, they took out the inner fender and just, they were jumping the starter right down there, but... I looked under there, it did have the factory cats on it, which was good. So, the price he wanted was, um, you know, basically a little over um, what, you know, the cat value was. So, I ended up, uh, you know, saying, you know, I can't even hear it run. And he said, well, I said, I promise you this thing runs smooth. And he said, the... Uh, well, we were talking, the lady actually drove by in her new truck, and she started talking to me about it, and she said she loved this truck, and it ran so good. Um, she was sad that, you know, sad to see it go, but it just, uh, you know, too rusty as far as the lines, and, you know, obviously, what you can see. So... I made a deal on it and bought this too, so uh, I started messing around with it, and I couldn't get it to, uh, just like he said, didn't do anything with the key, so I started uh, diagnosing some stuff, fuses, relays, and uh, wasn't coming up with anything, security system, stuff like that, then I ended up uh, trying to jump the starter, and I think I kind of like banged the side of the starter with my pry bar and all of a sudden um, I touched the two terminals and it started to crank but what it did was it just it would just start and shut off right away uh, kind of like something was cutting it off you know so I I ended up uh, talking to you know like five different people that I know just sent them a text, a message, you know, kind of, you know, people that I knew would uh, have a quick answer on, you know, you just get different ideas of what you, you can try and stuff like that. None of, none of the ideas were working. So 
I was kind of bummed out, but I could hear the engine first. I mean, like I said, it would start for just like a second and shut off, and it sounded pretty good. And then I ended up talking to one guy here in town that I started to uh, get to know that kind of like a backyard sort of mechanic. And he said, Chris, he said, I'm telling you, he said, the mass airflow sensor, that's what it is. And I was like, man, I've never seen a mass airflow sensor really do that. Usually they'll run and just kind of run shitty. But so... I was going to take the one out of the blue truck and just plug it in just to see, but on that truck, like, it was like a sign that I shouldn't do it because all these screws here were, like, all seized, and I said, you know what, I'm going to end up breaking something on a truck that drives every day, so I left it alone, and I said, you know what, whatever, I, I had the truck... I got it off the trailer, it was in the garage, and then this one was going to come in, so I actually had to pull this out with a chain and put it where it is. So then when this truck came, I was looking at it, and it had a brand new mass airflow sensor right in it, just kind of sitting there, the air filter was off, so I brought it over and I plugged it in. And she fired right up. Now, of course, in true fashion, I already cut the cats off and cashed those in. You know how we do it. So, uh, after I plugged it in, now it's making me a liar, but it's, uh, that's just the battery. You gotta put this on, uh, full go and uh, she'll fire right up As you can see, she's a smooth runner. So, now we got two 5.3 LS motors in stock. We have a uh, 4L60. Like I said, uh, I don't know if I said this truck's got 189,000 on it which uh, still isn't bad for these. Um, the old blue truck over there has got 250 on it, so. <clears throat> so there you go, 1999 Chevy Silverado 1500. Tons and tons of parts. Um, I mean, could you fix it and drive this truck? Yeah. It's really not terrible. It's it's not too terrible of a truck. I mean, that um, that crack, you could fix that easily. I, that doesn't worry me at all. But uh, it has zero brakes right now. I mean, nothing. I tried putting some fluid in so that I could, uh, you know, maybe take it down the road and see you know, how the tranny shifted and stuff. I was already convinced it wasn't going to run, so that's why I cut the cats. But, uh... <clears throat> so there you go. Um, Got to look at this truck a little closer. Probably after I'm done stripping the red one, get rid of that. Pull this in and kind of crawl underneath of it and just kind of get a better look you know um, 
maybe I don't know could be a runner I mean it's 99 I'm sure that I could uh, if I contacted that lady I could probably if I really wanted to I could probably get a replacement title uh, it was registered through like a real estate company so it might be a little bit of a pain in the ass but I'm sure like I said if I really wanted it I could get it and put it on the road but so all of a sudden that's how it happens one day you got nothing next day you got Chevy parts everywhere you got this uh, commercial freezer from McDonald's plugged it in turns right on it got to four degrees digital readout four degrees that's freezing somebody's got to need that even got some free gas out of it the uh, the only reason why I pulled the fuel tank out was it was hanging out there was only one strap holding it uh, so I just cut it and um, just wired up the pump to a battery sucked the gas out but all sorts of good parts you know you never know when you might need something uh, stuff that you know stupid little things that I think I might need I'm just gonna you know label them right on them what, what what it came out of the mileage put it away for a rainy day you never know I got dry shafts you got bumpers you got radiators we got wheels and doors and I mean This truck was really too bad. I mean, yeah, it's a regular cab, eight foot bed, four wheel drive. It's too bad that um, probably if both trucks would have been here at once, probably would have uh, advised him to maybe take the transmission from that one. And uh, this truck. Before it was ripped to shreds by me, it's really, really was a decent truck. I mean, the frame has more crust on it, but it's not rotted through. It just needed all the lines, you know, a whole fuel line kit, whole brake lines. And, I mean, really, 130K, this was, this was a nice truck, you know. Definitely would have been worth some money to somebody and would have been an excellent uh, winter, you know, truck for me to haul shit around. I mean, that the bed's not even bad. Usually they're gone up here. The beds are all rotted. Everyone's going nuts over this bed. And it's not even mint. So, there you go, scrap everywhere. So there you go, just wanted to uh, give you a little update what's going on around here. Uh, and a couple of, uh, a couple nice days, you know, 60 degrees, that's all it took to get people start doing stuff, getting out in the yard, wanting cars gone, junk gone. I don't think I've had one day that I haven't ran the truck and went and picked something up. It, uh, like I said, hauling shit down, down to the guy, bringing him whole cars, selling cats, and going to the scrap yard. You can scrap over there, picking up truck beds full of scrap and all kinds of stuff, and then 
getting calls from local McDonald's. Uh, got a call the other day from the uh, Katahdin, uh, the um, local motel anyway. And uh, they are taking the time, you know, they're, they've been closed for a while because of the COVID and they've been redoing all the rooms, putting all new uh, heat pumps and replacing the air conditioners and stuff. So I got a, went over there, got a whole pile of ACs and um, guy's going to have more stuff. You know, he said I've been, to, you know, the Indian people that own it, and uh, they, he said, man, he said, I am looking, you know, for somebody to uh, to take this stuff for a long time. I said, no, no, been right around the corner for two years almost now, so he's got my number now, and uh, he's going to have a lot more stuff, so got busy so it's kind of funny how uh still recording um you know the story on the old blue truck where needed a differential and then that whole deal there i ended up trading those doors off that green truck and guy said pull pull the thing right in and Pull it right in, slap the differential right in on the lift. Gave me a hand doing it. And, uh, and then, it's like, this whole time, I've been just looking for a complete parts truck. And I know of about four other Silverados in this era sitting in town here, just waiting. It's just the people... They don't care that stuff sits and the town really doesn't get on them about getting rid of it. So usually what I do is I just cruise around in the truck and they'll see me and, you know, all of a sudden it pops in the old head. Hey, you still want to pick up that junk? You know, and yeah. So then it happens. So that's kind of what I try to do. Um, but it's amazing. Run into... Uh, two deals like this and uh I always kind of wanted to score an, a nice LS motor but I figured you know my luck is going to be one with 300,000 miles or something but I end up getting two of them so now I need another engine stand or I don't know the dilemma I have now is the red one's got 130,000 on it. I know that just from the look of the truck, the history of the truck, and now the transmission is in that other guy's truck, and that thing is like new. Um, the only dilemma I am in is that I wasn't able to hear the red one run for a long time, like actually sit there and idle and get up to temperature because the fuel lines were just pissing everywhere and it hadn't been running a while so it was kind of tough to get running plus that guy needed that transmission like right away so it was there was no time if I had more you know time with it I probably would have brought it inside here and uh you know, rigged up a couple of fuel lines, you know, some rubber liners, just something, you know, quick that I could um, actually start the thing, you know, check some fluids in it, make sure it was all up and let it get up to temperature and really hear the engine before I put it on a stand and, you know, say to myself, I have a nice LS engine on a stand, which, I mean, I'm pretty sure that I do with that one. But, in all reality, like I said, I didn't really hear it run for long, so I don't know. Um, so that's sort of a, I guess, you know, half a gamble or something on that one. But, now, then I have the white truck, and that has a nice running 
5.3 that obviously I can sit there and let it run and uh, it got up to temperature I mean I let it idle the other day for like an hour and uh, I mean there is not there's not a tick there is not a sound no smoke nothing when that thing fired up so and that's got 180 on it 189 not too bad and then uh, like I said on that one I'd like to at least get a little bit of brakes in it so that I could take it down the road, take it for a ride, feel the transmission shift before I say I have a nice 4L60 sitting on the floor over here in the shed for the day that I need it maybe for another truck I get or, you know, the one goes in the blue one and we decide that we want to fix it. Um, I have spare parts all over the place two transfer cases, two electronic push-button uh, cases, so that's nice, and uh, that's where I'm at, two LS engines, so start stocking them up, stocking them, stacking them, you wouldn't really stack them, but you'd have them in stock. We're stocking them up. We're stocking everything. Chevy truck parts, we got them. Tailgates, bumpers, doors, fenders. If you caught on to this, but we got red, white, and blue. Chevrolets. That's America.